Globally, we are engaged in a war against a pandemic. And whilst humanity fights this war against a virus gone rogue, a virus incapacitating an entire planet, we've seemingly forgotten the lessons history teaches us about war. Perhaps we've never read or cracked the art of war. Perhaps we've missed the epic stories of giant wooden horses or the Untersiebuts or the Navajo code talkers. Somehow we've lost sight of the more insidious war being waged below the surface of this viral war. Indeed, we've lost sight of the fact that the outcome of almost all wars hinges on how well those waging said war safeguard, protect and defend accurate communication and discourse. In 1985, when the US was engaged in the Cold War, Neil Postman warned us of the impending consequences of our cultural obsession with entertainment in amusing ourselves to death, public discourse in the age of show business. In a time when George Orwell's portrayal of authoritarian Big Brother's control of communication was the ever-present looming reality to be feared, Postman put forth that Huxley's fictionalized utopian society in Brave New World, World was the more concerning insidious reality. Huxley imagined a future where people medicate themselves into bliss, surrendering truthful communication on the altar of entertainment. Thus, Postman cautioned us to critically question how a medium alters communication itself as, quote, particular mediums of communication can only sustain a particular level of ideas. Or in other words, that any particular medium based upon its particular form will inherently have certain constraints and limitations. Twitter's 280 character limit is one literal example of such, which by default limits the depths one can plummet in any given tweet. But even back in the age of television, which was mere foreshadowing of the social media beast we now indulge, Postman saw that the medium itself has the power to change and even undermine the communication by dumbing it down to such an extent that it ceases to communicate anything of value. Worse yet, it has the power to go so far as to instead manipulate and mislead, all while masquerading behind the guise of communication and social discourse. Postman's words have only gained more traction since he first penned them 35 years ago. 35 years before a sitting president of the United States issues forth policy via Twitter sound bites. 35 years before spreading conspiracy theories posture themselves as insider scoop dramatic documentaries. 35 years before the viral spread of information on social media platforms reward and amplify the most narcissistic of tendencies. Postman warned us of the dangers of our gluttonous consumption of information packaged in these ways. As he saw things, our cultural brainwashing proceeds most gracefully and most unencumbered when we actively participate in the delusion by mistaking our addiction for the communication of truth. Lana and Lily Wachowski artistically rendered a similar futuristic picture of entertainment hijacking reality in the 1999 film, The Matrix where, quote, humanity is trapped inside a simulated reality, end quote. Plugged in, mind numbed, ingesting the pictures and dream realities downloaded into their brains by aliens, aptly controlled by the supplied sensationalistic realities. We need 
we need only open. Unfortunately, we need not fast forward into the future to encounter such realities. We need only open our social media accounts in the midst of a viral pandemic where we too can plug into the matrix. Flipping through the ver various marketed realities, we too can consume and ingest based upon our particular inclinations, our particular worldview. A surplus of entertaining content served up to confirm our own bias. But perhaps more disturbingly, we can now help others plug into the matrix by sharing such entertaining content with such religious fervor that even the ghost of D.L. Moody himself might smile at the brimstone-laden passion. While the SARS-CoV-2 virus may have quarantined many of us physically, it only seems to have exacerbated our rampant addiction and ingestion of entertainment masquerading as pertinent information. The Christian Bible puts it thus, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. End quote. In other words, we wrestle in the mind. We wrestle in the realm of ideas. We wrestle in the form of cultural biases and assumptions. We wrestle in the land of language fighting for the social discourse to communicate truth rather than language being enslaved and forced to lie for the sake of a good plot twist or marketing scheme. We wrestle against a hidden agenda, infiltrating our brains whilst we scroll, bypassing critical thinking, because let's face it, the facts in juicy sound bites or imagery form swallow so much more readily than the ingestion of lengthy essays printed on the page. Thus, while our front lines risk their lives, waging war against the SARS-CoV-2 virus, searching for solutions, those of us in more background roles would do well to recognize our real fight, our real battle. Most of us have somehow been comfortable surrendering ourselves in a learned helplessness to take a back seat in the role of fighting this global virus. We must remember and recall the lessons of history. All wars hinge upon the skill and accuracy of communication. We've somehow forgotten how important our role is in managing communication, doing everything that we can to fight viral misinformation positive to us. We've somehow imagined our role as truth seekers or communication moderators as meaningless or unimportant. Nothing could be further from the truth. Fighting this global pandemic involves a host of amazing frontline caregivers. But fighting this global pandemic also involves us in the background, on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, on social media, out in the world, putting forth our best minds, unencumbered by entertainment purposes or narcissistic supply. We must put forth our best. We must seek to share and engage content that focuses less on entertainment or sensationalism and more on truth, perhaps in such a way that our own biases are even questioned. We must religiously and unequivocally spit out the drug, the soma in the words of Huxley, that we've somehow ingested to numb the pain of the matrix of this viral pandemic and instead return to a social discourse that ultimately aims to bring forth truth rather than mere entertainment. In so doing, we may begin to approach something reminiscent of societal healing.